I call the member for, for Morton. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak about this MPI on the importance of integrity in government. Following the member for Parks, uh, I've been in the, this parliament at the same time as him, eight years and one day. So uh, I, I know a little bit about the, the people that I've met over those eight years, and I know most people are here for good reasons. They are, uh, irrespective of what side of the chamber they, they sit on, uh, in government or in opposition, most people are here to do good things. But what I, what I did note in the speech put forward by the member for Aston and the member for Parks was a gaping silence when it came to defending their colleague. Mm. An incredible silence when it came to defending their, their colleague. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we are here today talking about the importance of integrity in government. And I do so through the prism of of having a great respect for this democratic institution. You won't, I know how tough it is for the member for Parks to, to be an MP a long way, like many of us, away from his family, uh, away from his partner. Uh, and this is a job that is incredibly tough when it comes to our families and our partners and to our lifestyle because of the, the hours and the travel. So you need to have that unwavering belief in democracy to do this job. So that's. And that belief in democracy is more important than any one person here, than of the 150 elected House of Representatives people. It's more important than any political party that we represent. It's more important than power. And that's why this MPI is so important. Because if we are going to have faith in this democratic institution, this building, this wonderful piece of history that it is such an honour to, to, uh, uh, to represent uh, the people of Morton, I we must Having, have faith in all of the people in this party, uh, all of the people in this parliament. And because of, because of my concerns with the actions uh, from those opposite, three, three people in particular, but the, the member for Fisher uh, uh, particularly, I wrote to the Australian Federal Police in December 2012. Uh, and that was following the federal court judgment, Judge Rera's uh, and I'll quote some of his judgment, where he said he reached a firm conclusion that the predominant purpose of Mr Ashby's claim was to pursue a political attack against Mr Slipper, designed to tip the government to Mel Bruff's and the LNP's advantage. That's the history. Shame. Now, this is not before the courts at the moment. It's only being investigated by the police. This was, uh, that was the federal court uh, looking into the, uh, Mr, Ashby, uh, Mr Slipper's claim against uh, Mr Ashby. Well, to, to have it thrown out, basically. So my first letter to the AFP on the 21st of December directed them to the findings by Judge Rares, which said the material also indicates that Mr Bruff procured Mr Ashby and Ms Stone to provide unauthorised access to restricted data contrary to Section 4781 of the Criminal Code and unauthorised disclosure of information by Commonwealth officers contrary to Section 70 of the Crimes Act. So this was in December. 2013 that we were, I was communicating with the AFB. Now that judgment, uh, the judgment of Judge Rares had overturned by the full, federal, full court of the federal court. However, I note that Mr Aspie has not pursued his claim against Mr Slipper since that overturning. And then we had that incredible admission on 60 Minutes on the 7th of September, where in a 60 Minutes interview with Liz Hayes, where she asked the current member for Fisher, did you ask James Aspie to procure copies of Peter Slipper's diary for you? Mr Bruff replied, yes, I did. So that's why it's quite telling that the two previous speakers on this MPI, no mention, no mention of their, their colleague, no mention of their party colleague at all. So after that public admission by Mr Bruff, I wrote to the AFP again for the third time on the 8th of September 2014, pointing out his admission. And then that incredible set of circumstances after the democratically elected prime minister was cut down by the, the plotters opposite, and we had Prime Minister Turnbull appointed, the current member for, for Fisher appointed by him to the office with the, that requires the highest standards of integrity. This is a port, not, not a normal portfolio. This is a responsibility for key integrity agencies, such as the Commonwealth Ombudsman, the Australian National Audit Office, the Australian Electoral Commission, and the administration of parliamentary entitlements frameworks, including cab charges and the like. This is not an ordinary portfolio. It's extraordinary that you could still be in that job after the Australian Federal Police have raided his home. Not visited, 
He has been raided by the Australian Federal Police. Arthur Sinodine has stood down for less. I cannot believe this man is still sitting in that I thank role. The member for Morton. Yeah. 